Welcome to Backroom Breakdown with Mora, your analysis of local, state, and federal politics. This is DITV's weekly politics segment where I'll discuss important political events impacting Iowa City. I'm your host, Mora DeSico. Paul Pelosi, husband of Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, was assaulted in their San Francisco home late Friday evening. The suspect, David Wayne DePap, allegedly broke into the home to assault Nancy Pelosi. He did not find her and decided to tie up Paul and wait for her to return home. Paul was able to call 911 from inside the home. Police were dispatched and upon arriving to the scene, witnessed a pap taking a hammer from Pelosi and beating him with said hammer. Police promptly arrested the pap. The pap was charged with attempted homicide, elder abuse, burglary, assault with a deadly weapon, and more. He pled not guilty and waived his right to a hearing in 10 days in his first trial that was held yesterday on November 1st. The district attorney said that DePap gave a lengthy interview and cooperated with law enforcement. Police say that the attack was targeted. They also allege that DePap had a list of other targets that he would likely have continued to pursue had he not been caught. DePap was all, has also been found to be active in many conspiratorial forums online and subscribed to QAnon conspiracy theories like Democratic lawmakers are pedophiles, the 2020 election was rigged, and more. Police are continuing their investigation into the matter. In terms of Paul Pelosi, his doctors expect he'll make a full recovery. He suffered a skull fracture and injuries to his right arm and hand. Nancy Pelosi released a statement to many congressmen who voiced their support for, their, for Pelosi's family and horror over the attack. She said, quote, our children, our grandchildren, and I are heartbroken and traumatized by the life-threatening attack on our pop. We are grateful for the quick response of law enforcement and emergency services, and for the life-saving medical care he is receiving, end quote. Even President Biden had a response to the assault. The talk has to stop. That's the problem. We can't just say, I feel badly about the violence. We condemn it. Condemn what produces the violence. And this is my issue with identity politics. You put these extremes out there on the internet and tell your audience that to believe in the opposite is morally wrong. And this creates this huge division and discourages people from being moderate or even considering the other side, which is how America used to be. And because of the internet, anyone can put themselves in an echo chamber where their fantasies or beliefs are just encouraged, even if they're bigoted and wrong. I think this is the perfect example of someone who thinks that their feelings justify the means, which in this case happen to be violence. It doesn't. No opinion will justify an act like this. And the only way to stop this kind of behavior is to stop normalizing bigotry in any form. Racism, homophobia, xenophobia, etc. Free speech should be preserved, but just like David DePap had the right to express his, in my opinion, stupid opinions, I have the right to completely shut him down. Words do have power, and I think we should use them. Okay, now after being a bit too passionate, here's my hot take from Twitter for the week. This week, it's Senator Ted Cruz tweeting, abolish the IRS. Why? That's a great question. I believe it has something to do with Republicans' long-standing statement that they would like to abolish the IRS, but I could not find what made him tweet that now. It's just such a strong statement out of the blue, that's definitely for sure. But a midterm elections are coming up, so hey, I think that probably has something to do with it. Um, the response to his tweet also killed me. Like, it's just so straight up and serious. Like, are you a tax fraud, Senator Cruz? I, I just don't know how to take this. And I'm, I like feel like every week that I'm on Twitter, I just get more tired. Like, I feel like last week was a peak in Twitter for sure with the what I showed. But then this week, 
it's just so serious that it's, I don't even know if it can be funny. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Backroom Breakdown with Mora. I'll be back next week with the latest political news affecting Iowa City, Iowa, and the USA. I'm Maura DeSico. Have a great day.